Ducks fans, are you ready? You are listening to the Ducks and Pucks podcast. This is the number one home for Anaheim Ducks talk and analysis. Here we go. Welcome to the show. This is your host, Mike Walters, with my co-host, Eddie Richard. And uh, I guess this is a surprise podcast because uh, we weren't going to do one until after the draft. But then something happened before the draft, Eddie. Some guy named Dallas Akins got hired. So here we are. We're going to talk a little bit about him, uh, some trades going on throughout the uh, league and whatnot. And we'll talk about, of course, Dallas Akins. I got to pronounce that right because I don't want to get slammed on social media, but I asked Phil Hewitt, it's Akins, not Ekins. Uh, I know I messed that up before, but we have some poll questions out there. We have some people, uh, you know, weigh in on this. Uh, what is your initial reaction, Eddie, to uh, Dallas being the Ducks' new head coach? Well, congratulations to him, and I'm happy uh, we got a coach hired and set forward uh, before the draft coming up this week. So he has a chance to maybe have some input and have some – I don't know, some say on where he wants the team to go and, and kind of like a draft or, you know, a few draft picks that he would like to see in coach or if he knows these players, you know, from, you know, other people or something like that. So I'm really excited that we got the ball rolling on that. We're not just just wonderland trying to figure out what's going on or who are we going to have, but we actually have a coach that deserves to be there. And, and his promotion, uh, he, he deserved it. He, he, took, he took the goals to uh, – really far in the postseason in the AHL, and he just connected with the players and had that communication link with them. And I think that's going to translate to success uh, coming his uh, second time as being a head coach in the AHL. Yeah, and we uh, threw out a couple of poll questions. We had one on uh, Facebook, and, and I'm sorry, Facebook only allows two options. So I put out there whether or not you like it or you don't like it, and it was over 90% like uh, Aikens as the new coach. Uh, I did one on Twitter as well, and I put in the uh, the third option if you were undecided. Still, uh, right now, 73% said yes, 3% said no, 24 undecided. I mean, it's still a resounding yes. Either way, you look at the polls, if you look at the uh, Twitter one or the Facebook one that we did, and you could still vote if you want to jump on there and throw in uh, your vote, and you want to comment as well. So those are uh, out there right now and still live as we are doing this podcast, but uh, exciting news. Uh, you know, on Sunday, Eddie, it was funny. I had a source close to the team hit me up and uh, she told me, hey, just so you know, the uh, the Ducks are going to announce the uh, coach on Monday. Uh, they're going to announce it at 12 noon Eastern. And I was cracking up. I'm like, OK, and it's going to be Dallas, right? And she told me, yes, it's going to be, uh, you know, Dallas uh, Aiken. So I was like, OK, great. And then of Right while I was talking to her, TSN posts that, hey, uh, Dallas is going to be the coach. So I was cracking up. I, I was kind of in a weird position on Sunday. Uh, she t- she told me she wasn't allowed to kind of reveal it, but she and I are good friends, and she knows some people close to the team. So she told me, and I was like, okay. So I was like, crap, I have to sit here and sit on this information. And then, of course, once TSN put it out, I was I was good to go to put it out there. So – the news came out, and then obviously 9 a.m. Pacific time on Monday, they announced that Dallas Akins was the coach. Then the press conference was at noon Pacific time. And I really like what I uh, heard and saw uh, with the press conference there, Eddie. I, I like everything that Akins said. He, you know, he's very humble to get the position. And, you know, what Murray said too as well, it seems like uh, Murray did a thorough search. He talked about uh, interviewing a bunch of other uh, candidates in the off season and how it uh, quote, it always came back to Dallas and that was the pick he went with. So overall I'm really ecstatic. And I think if you're a Ducks fan, you should be pumped up. Uh, no more Randy Carlisle. We have a coach in there now that uh, before the draft and he knows the younger players and he's helped, you know, basically develop the Ducks organization for the last four years, Eddie. So uh, I mean, we all expected Dallas to get the job, but the fact that now it, it's you know basically written down in ink, uh, I'm, I'm super ecstatic, Eddie. Oh yeah, same here. Uh, I think he's he's ready to go. He wants to take off, you know, as fast as he can. I think, uh, I, think we, I think we all learn from our mistakes, uh, things we do in the past. I mean, none of us are perfect, and if you are, then I mean, 
then good for you then. But I think he learned a lot from his time in Edmonton. And I think he's going to learn from the mistakes that he made over there and not make those same mistakes again. And then to bring in some of the good things that he did over there in Edmonton and just kind of build off that for the Ducks. He seems like a, like a brand new coach. He's ready to eager or he's, he's like, he's ready to jump for the opportunity. He's really eager for it. And I'm pretty sure he knows this time around that they're not just, just going to promote him and throw him in there and just be like, okay, we'll see what happens. You know, the Ducks went and interviewed other coaches. So, you know, they're serious about winning and being competitive. And I think that that probably shows him a lot too, that, hey, they're just not throwing him in there and just, you know, kind of setting him up for failure. I think they want him to succeed, of course, and they want the Ducks to succeed. And uh, I was looking up some other coaches that got fired and, you know, had some success. The Bruins coach, Cassidy, he was fired. He didn't last two full seasons. And then he gets his um, his second chance at it and takes his team to the cup final. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, they lost in seven. But, I mean, that's for a, a coach that was fired. And, and part of his mistake that he just said he wasn't, you know, didn't have that communication with his players that well. And he's obviously doing something different. And also, uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be the new head coach, the official head coach of the St. Louis Blues. But Barube, right? I said it right, right? Bar- yeah, okay, cool. I, that's a fun, fun one to say. But, you know, look what he did. He was an interim head coach. He comes in there after getting relieved of his duties prior, and he takes his team to the Stanley Cup final, and they win. And so, and, you know, I believe in second chances. I believe that these these coaches that get the second chances, you know, they're ready to work hard. They learn from their mistakes, and they want to do uh, change their way of coaching to have success for themselves and their players. So I'm really excited, you know, that the Ducks – just, just the way everything you know, translated and how they took time and they interviewed everybody. But I'm, I'm really happy that Aikens got the job. And I think we've been saying Aikens, Mike. I don't know like why, why this random thing popped in my head, but I think there's a Pokemon named Aikens. I'm pretty sure there is. And I don't know why I even know that. I never. I think I watched a few of the little cartoon things. But I really think that's why we got that Aikens thing stuck in our head because we're familiar with it and we heard it before. But – I'm happy. I'm glad that we can move forward now. We have a, a new coach, and I'm sure we're going to see a different style of coaching and you know, more of a player coach that can really get the best out of his players. Yeah, absolutely. We'll dive into that. There's there's so much to cover on the Aikens front. Uh, first off, yeah, I did talk to Phil Hewlett earlier today before we recorded this, and I wanted to get the uh, you know correct pronunciation. And he's like, hey, it's Aiken like bacon. So I'm like, oh, okay, uh, Dallas Bacon Aiken. I'm like, okay, you know, hey, whatever. But no, seriously, uh, I want to make sure I get that right. I don't want to get fried on social media because I, I like to butcher names, unfortunately. Um, so, yes, correct. It is Aikens. That is is the way you pronounce his name. But, yeah, the way that things went down uh, in the Stanley Cup final. Oh, by the way, uh, if you didn't listen to the last show, I think you and I said St. Louis was going to win game seven. I, 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 I kind of remember that, Eddie. We recorded the show right before the game. I think you and I were right for once in a while. Yeah, I was surprised. Like, especially when you said that, you know, both of us want the Blues to win, watch the Bruins win. But, yeah, I was, I was happy for them. Congratulations to the St. Louis Blues. Especially everything they, they had to go through and being what, dead last at one point in January, getting a new coach, and then having a, a rookie, I think a, a fourth or fifth stringer goalie come up and just play lights out. I, you know, I, I'm happy for them, happy for their city, and I'm definitely happy for Brett Hall. He's just he's at Ovechkin level yet, and I, I kind of miss a player going on that, you know, on that rage, you know, to be a Ovechkin drunk. But uh, you know, he's pretty funny when you give him the microphone and just let him just speak his drunk mind. But you know what? Yeah, that, that's his team. He deserves it. He played there for a while. So, it's, you know, congratulations to them and everyone, especially Ryan O'Reilly, too. He's one of my favorite players. So I'm really happy to see him, you know, lift the cup and, and get the con smite, especially, you know, had, you know, him getting, you know, pretty much booted out of Buffalo, which he didn't want to. And, you know, th- that kind of took some toll on him. But it, it's really good to see that, you know, they probably made a mistake on trading him and he had success over there. So, you know, congratulations to him and the rest of the St. Louis Blues and their fans. Yeah, and Brett Hole, he was lit before the game? No way. You could not tell on that broadcast that he was lit. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I was cracking up watching uh, you know, that pregame and then seeing all the comments on social media. That was just hilarious. But uh, yeah, I'm happy St. Louis won. We did not jinx them, thankfully. And uh, hey, they won a cup, their first one in their franchise history. Uh, hey, Sharks, how you guys doing over there in San Jose? But uh 
you know, they're still choking as we talked about since, uh, what, 91? Is that when they've, yeah, that's right, 91. So the Sharks are still choking. But uh, they're in the news as well, and we're going to talk about that later in the show. But back to uh, the Ducks with Dallas uh, Aikens in there. I think it's kind of interesting because you talk about St. Louis and Barube coming in there, uh, Bingington coming in there, and and, and them winning. I, I think that's kind of interesting with the Ducks situation. We know that the Ducks went on a whole bunch of losing streaks during the season. They did not bring in anybody in the middle. They ended up booting out Carlisle on February 10th. They put in uh, Murray himself. You know, He said, screw it. I'm going behind the bench. I'm going to figure out what's going on. He could have brought in Dallas Aikens at the time. He did not. And I think that was the right call. But, you know, something that a lot of people don't talk about, Eddie, is if uh, Murray booted Carlisle sooner in the season, I really wonder what would have happened if he would have brought in Aikens earlier in the season. Because you look at the Blues, they were doing, you know, dead last at at, at the end of the uh, holiday season. And they turned it around. Uh, with the Ducks, it was already mid-February. There was only two months to go. I, I think it was too little too late. But if they would have brought in Eakins earlier, say in December, I wonder how the Ducks season would have ended. It might, it might have been yeah, a little bit I could bit see him, you know, Eddie. catching fire with the right coach and then, you know, making the playoffs like they usually do with that last few months of the season. But just like you said, I, um, I, I'm glad they didn't bring him up too early. I, I, I didn't want to see what happened with Edmonton and just throwing him in there with, with a failing team already. And just having that disaster and that dumpster fire, or fire to put out. I mean, who knows? Maybe you could have turned a team around if it, you know we had that decision made a little sooner. And you know, we could be talking about how the Ducks just won the Stanley Cup beating the Bruins. But, I mean, that's a whole different story. That's a lot of what if. So I'm just glad he didn't bring him in when he did. And, and he just continued to have that failure. And it just kind of ruined his confidence coming up to, you know, pretty much taking a team that was on a dumpster fire. I think the, I think our GA made a right call. And I'm glad he's – Stepped in and took that role of head coach just to get a, like a, you know, an insight of his players and how things are ran and how things that should be differently and and you know he he, he was you know in, in in those shoes right there and and I think that's what helped them probably make a decision too on hiring the best guy for the job and not just you know promoting the best guy for the job. So I'm glad everything you know transpired the way it did. Unfortunately, the Ducks didn't make the playoffs. That's the only thing that was frustrating and I'll keep reverting back to that Philadelphia game when I woke up sick and got their ass kicked, but yeah, it, what's done is done is, Oh, you know, we can't really keep dwelling in the past, especially me in that, that Philadelphia game. I don't know why it bothers me so much, but I'm just looking forward to the future and I'm looking forward to a, a, everything he's going to bring to the team. And he, he already wants to start doing things right now. He's going to take uh, his personal time in the off season and go travel to certain players and go talk to them and, and kind of find, like, you know, I think he wants to talk to, well, if I were him, all the leaders of the team and, and trying to see what, where they're at and, and what they want for the team and really connect to the players. And like I said, he, I think he wants to get the best, the, you know, the best hockey out of the players and just have that success that he had in, you know, San Diego and bring it up to Anaheim. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, he talked about uh, Getzloff highly, about him being a captain and a leader of the team how he looks for him to carry uh, the Anaheim Ducks next season. He talked about Hampus Lindholm, who was also at the press conference there in Irvine when they uh, announced uh, Aikens as the coach on Monday as well, so he was high on him. And Aikens is a player's coach. I mean, everything we've seen, you know, there's not a lot on him, of course, being in the AHL. You don't hear a lot of news and whatnot. But all indications are that uh, he really wants to motivate his team. He was on uh, Sportsnet, which was on uh, NHL Network earlier today. I actually listened to that. And he's really looking forward to taking over the reins. He's very humbled to have this position. He wants to move the Ducks forward. And I also think he learned from his days in Edmonton. Uh, I'm, t- I'm kind of tired of that. A lot of people, the, the naysayers out there, are on his ass about the way he performed in Edmonton. But you need to look at what's gone on over there. And when he was there... Uh, you know, five, six years ago, that team royally sucked, for lack of a better term. I, I don't know how else to say it, but they had bad defense. They had bad goaltending. Uh, their analytics was terrible as well. So, yeah, I mean, he, he didn't do great over there when he was with uh, the Edmonton Oilers. But you have to look at all everything, you know, together. I mean, he did 113 games between 2013 and 2015. Uh, they were 36, 63, and 14 which, of course, isn't a great record. 
but you have to look at the totality of the circumstances. And I think he learned a lot from that. He talked about it uh, on the Sportsnet um, podcast earlier today, like I said. And I think he's going to come out motivated. I, I, he's going to look for this team. Uh, as far as his style of play goes, we don't know exactly what it is, but he alluded to being a, a quicker team, a faster team. He did talk about being a physical team, which I know you like, Eddie, but at the same time, not just running around hitting people, also being able to move the puck, clog up the neutral zone, and establish the four check, which are all keys uh, in the league now, and rolling four lines as well. So Right now, I mean, like we said in the poll question, almost all of you are agreeing that uh, you're happy to see him. There's a handful of you that are kind of a, in a wait and see approach, which I, I totally understand. But I'm happy. I'm really pumped up for next season. I think Eakin should have been in there before Carlisle came back the second time. Uh, probably one of the few people that said that. And I, I'm excited for next season. There's a lot of fan questions we'll get to in a little bit. But if you're a Ducks fan right now, it's summertime. The draft is coming up. Uh, there's some you know, free agency things going on with Kessler and Perry. There's a lot of uncertainty. But the fact that we have a coach, one that's motivated and, and moving forward prior to the draft, uh, I, I think you have to be super uh, excited, Eddie, at least if you're a, a Ducks fan. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, it's, the Blues won the cup already, so now it's, it's, it's you know, for square one, everyone starts from the, from the bottom again and everyone has that, you know, the undefeated record or having lost a game record coming in the next season. And it's, we get to see something different, a whole new coaching style, a different, you know, I guess a, a newer school style of coaching uh, from him than we saw with Carlisle. So that, that's going to be really exciting. And especially with the players that are going to come up and who has, you know, the opportunity to shine and, and be that, you know, that next great player and, and to do, you know, their absolute best for the Ducks. It's going to be interesting to see the, the Perry situation. I know we're going to bring that. I'm bringing it up again from last show. But it's going to see what, what you know, what interesting what happens with that and how that goes. If he's going to come back and have a, a great season or if they're going to decide to part ways and who comes back. And and I think uh, with, uh, with our DM, too, and what he's going to be doing, just he, he's acting different already as far as, like, you know, st- taking, you know, uh, taking that role of coach, uh, bringing in a, a different style of coach, and and hopefully come off season he'll go and try to get those those players that are going to make uh, an impact for the Ducks, and not just go to the you know revert to bargain Bob and just try to get the best out of a, a, a lacking player, and it doesn't really you know get translate to anything. I just hope this you know like I said I, I hope this retooling thing was just a retooling thing right now, and come next season the Ducks are ready to come in swinging and be competitive and. I, I definitely know Dallas wants to have success and he wants to prove, you know, those naysayers wrong and, and prove that he belongs in the NHL and, and what he can bring to the team and really help the Ducks and, you know, really get that yeah, that energy and that, that pumped up again in Anaheim because I know, you know, towards the, the, the end of the season, it was kind of hard. You didn't know where the Ducks were going. They already admitted defeat. It's, you know, I know I've been to games and it was a little quieter in there. So I'm looking forward to next season. I, I can't wait, you know, come these, this prospect camp and, and the training camps, I get to go and see some hockey and hopefully talk to some players and, and pick their brains about, you know, about what they want out of next season and draft up an article again and, and go from there. Yeah, I think the big thing looking back to last season is when Murray did decide to pull Carlisle back in February, it was better at that point that he didn't bring Dallas in because the Ducks only had two months to go. They were battling it out for last place with our favorite team, the LA Kings, at that time. And and let's be realistic. There was no way that the Ducks were going to be a competitive team in those final two months. They could have maybe turned it around and maybe squeaked in as an eighth place team. Maybe. I mean, it's a long, long shot. But even if they did, they would have got knocked out. So there's, there's no way that that team would have made a serious run. Uh, once Murray did decide to pull the plug on Randy Carlisle. So I, I think it was smart not to bring uh, Dallas in at that time. He he left him down in San Diego, let the goals do their thing. You know, they got really, really close to getting to the uh, AHL championship. You know, they came up short barely, you know, but he, he let him develop the players down there and do his thing. And with that, I mean, I talked about in the article when uh, Aikens was hired, if he would have brought Dallas up, he would have had two uh, displaced teams, basically. You had the Ducks that were already in turmoil with Carlisle in there. The players weren't playing well. They were close to last place or in last place, you know, battling it out, like we said, uh, with L.A. 
And if you brought Aikens up, now you have the goals are displaced and they got to figure out what's going on down there. So I'm happy that Murray did uh, hold off. He went behind the bench, tried to figure out what was going on. And the goals got close. You know, they, they played well. They had a good season. Uh, some of the players got sent down, obviously, when the Ducks were knocked out. And they did well. So I, I'm happy with that. I'm happy that he didn't, uh, you know, decide to put Eakins in there right away and thrust them into a situation that was negative. Now, in the summer, we have the draft coming up. We have free agency coming up. And he can go into next season fresh, basically. And he knows everybody in the system. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Uh, Eakins uh, was the front runner from the very beginning. And we all knew that. And so for him to finally get picked and put in there, uh, I'm ecstatic. Murray did do his uh, due diligence. He did go out and interview a bunch of people. And he ended up deciding to go with the front runner, uh, Dallas Aikens. So I'm really excited for next season. I think the Ducks, I think one of the fan questions uh, somebody asked us is if they'll win the cup uh, next season. Uh, Josh asked that. I, I, I don't know if they'll win the cup, but I, I do think, Eddie, that the Ducks have a really good chance at winning the division and or at least making the playoffs. Oh, I definitely agree. Uh I mean, as a fan, yeah, I mean, I definitely want to go watch my team each and every game and get those wins, and I want them, you know, obviously win the Cup. That That's the ultimate goal. But, um, I mean, I, I know we're going to be in a better position than we were last season. I mean, I, knock on wood. I mean, you can, go only, you can only go up from there. I mean, last season was kind of rough and was bad, but I'm, I'm excited for next season and, and what can happen, especially with this new coach. And it, who knows if they make the playoffs just one game at a time, one series at a time. You never know. We could be having a totally different podcast this time next year. If you haven't fired me on the podcast yet, Mike, we could be talking about the Ducks lifting that cup. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. Just, I guess to answer it, yeah, I think they have a shot at the cup. I mean, every team does. You had a team. You had Arizona almost you know, sneak into the playoffs. You had a team like the Hurricanes to get in there and do some damage. Uh, you had Columbus uh, get in there and they did some damn, definitely did some bad damage. So, I mean, every team has the opportunity to win the Cup, but just if everything starts clicking right, the players get hot at the right times, and, you know, if the stars in line, you never know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there's still a chance. I, I think they definitely can contend for the playoffs for sure. And as far as winning the Cup, you know, we'll, we'll see. But I, I'm, I'm, all I can say is I'm optimistic. That, that's the bottom line. With him in there, finally, I'm happy. Um, I know there was some reports out there that uh, the decision was made back in February. Uh, which I, I actually I reached out to Bob Murray uh, after the press conference because I was kind of curious to get his thoughts. I kind of let things die down. You know, it was a busy day, obviously, and and he said that he did not make the decision back in February that uh, you know Eakins was the front runner, but he still looked at all the candidates. And I think what's interesting about that is these other candidates out there that we talked about, they could possibly be assistant coaches. Uh, on the Ducks or maybe coaches on the goals. I mean, you never know. They might not be anything, but I, I think that's part of the process. And I don't think that Murray just uh, uh, was going to plug in Eakins right away and go from there. I think he did look at other candidates like he told me last night and try to weigh it out and see. But as he said, everything came back to Eakins. So he's the one that's, you know, the pick. Uh, that's the one that most of you agree with. That's the ones that we look at is uh, being the guy. And with the Ducks, it is, I think the sky is the limit here. You know, we had uh, Lauren here ask us, you know, what did you guys uh, or who did you guys think uh, was the coach, uh, want to be the coach? And we both had talked about uh, Aikens. I mean, Lambert was one that we had talked about that we thought we would be in the mix. You and I had talked about on previous shows being in there. Uh, once, once he was eliminated, it was kind of like, okay, and, you know, there's not really many other options out there. So I'm not surprised by this at all. Uh, I figured that Dallas would be uh, the front runner and be the selection all along. And uh, I'm happy with it. So I, I, I think the big question now is who is he going to pick as his assistants? I heard that uh, Will Ford may be one of the assistants that stays with the team. And then I'm, I'm curious to see who they put down in San Diego. I, I, I don't know that. I haven't heard anything about the goal situation, but uh, it's just going to be interesting. The comments that Eakins made on Sportsnet, he really wants a team that's going to move the puck uh, as far as passing and skating, not standing around. He wants a team that's going to be physical. 
he wants teams to, you know, uh, be afraid to play the Ducks, which is the way the Ducks were back in, you know, 2007, 2006 when they won the Cup. People were afraid to play the Ducks. That, yeah, yeah, you, you, you knew that Chris Pronger was going to, you know, crush you. You knew that the fourth line of Perry and Getzloff were going to score points when they had the chance to. Uh, and that's what I think that this team's looking forward to uh, come in the season. The, the NHL nowadays is a speed game. And when we talk about speed, it's not just skating fast. It's getting in the right position. It's passing the puck and getting the puck up the ice, connecting the dots as you go from your defensive zone to the offensive zone. And that's what Eakins is going to bring with this team. And if he collapses this year and he doesn't do well, I, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be too upset. I, I mean, I, I'd be surprised. I'll put it that way. I, I just don't see this team falling apart like they did last year. I think last year was just a complete waste bringing Carlisle in. And he should have been booted out uh, sooner. Possibly could have put Eakins in, you know, maybe back in December and turned it around. We all know the Ducks don't play well in October, November. And then towards the uh, end of December, they turn it up which they didn't decide to do. But you know what? Things happen for a reason. So with Eakins getting a fresh start this next uh, season, I'm looking forward to it. I think this team is really going to rock and roll. we got a lot of young guys coming up. He knows all these players. And I'm excited. That's all I can really talk. I mean, you have to be pumped up. I know it's only June right now, and October's a ways away. But I am, like, super excited. As soon as I heard that Eakins was the coach – uh, officially, because we kind of had an idea that he was for a while. And, I mean, everybody did. Everybody thought he was was the guy. But now that it's official and they can focus on the draft and free agency, uh, I'm just ecstatic, Eddie. And I, I'm really looking forward to next season. I think this team could do some damage. Uh, there's some trades and other things we'll talk about later in the show that, that are going to affect the Ducks a little bit. But the sky's the limit. You can only go up from here. I, I, I just don't see the Ducks having a worse season than they did last year. No, no, I, I agree with you 100%. I really think that our veteran players, too, will ha, you know, have a different style of coach and, and have a, a, a more of a mentor style of coach as well, not just someone that, that has that old school mentality and, and it's going to just, you know, kind of beat you to the ground until you, you listen. I mean, some players can react to different the situations and sometimes having something the same gets kind of old. So a change is needed. I really like how you talked about how, you know, to get uh, more physical and, and move the puck more and get faster. I mean, that's important. It, like you said, it's a speed game. So I, I hope he brings and makes teams, you know, come down like, oh, man, you know, we went to play them again or see that schedule and, and, you know, kind of slow the other team's faster players down, knowing that, you know, Ducks are going to play a little bit more edge and kind of play their game against them. And I think uh, I know a lot of people were talking about how it wasn't fair how the Ducks just waited this long and were interviewing other candidates. But I, I really think that uh, that Aikens doesn't feel that way. I think he thinks that the Ducks did their best to get the best man for the job because they want to be competitive. And, and it made him earn his spot. He just didn't get a promotion because he did well in San Diego. He actually had an interview just like everyone else. And he, he earned his spot to be a head coach. And, I, you know, I, congratulations to him. You know, 93 times. Like, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to be able to, to bring to the Ducks and, and how much he's going to change, you know, our team and, you know, for the better. So it, it's it's exciting, and I'm, I'm really happy for him, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to October. Or not even October, just come September. Let me watch some preseason games. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and I think the big thing you talked about, too, on uh, Sportsnet was – about the team basically building out from the goalie. And he talked about Gibson and how well he's played. And they talked about the defense and that that's what the team needs to do. So I, I think that was huge. He recognized that. I mean, we can't uh, – we know Gibson's the, the, been the man in net. We can't rely on him you know, too much. we got to improve on the defense. So that that's the only thing I do look at too is we talked about with some of these articles we have coming out uh, from Thomas, he uh, pushed out a whole bunch of articles, and they're all coming out this week on the prospects and uh, trading up in the draft and who the Ducks uh, may try to get as well. And we talked about it on the last podcast too, so if you didn't uh, hear that one, go back and check it out. But, I mean, with the Ducks, I, I really want to see them improve the defense. I mean, you've got Lindholm on there. Like we said, he's a big fan of Dallas. You've got Fowler on there. You've got Manson. But there's kind of a drop-off for the Ducks a little bit. I mean, part of the thing that Thomas wrote about one of his articles is who would be next. Would it be Larson or would it be Gooley? That would be in the top four. And if you haven't read those articles, check them out on DucksandPucks.com. 
He talks about uh, both those guys potentially being a top four defenseman if the Ducks don't trade. And I do plan to have Thomas on the podcast after the draft. He's going to write some articles about the picks uh, coming up this Friday and Saturday as well. He's kind of our expert when it comes to uh, prospects and drafts and whatnot. So that that's one thing that concerns me about the Ducks team. I think the goalie situation, obviously, you have Gibson in there. The coaching situation, I'm happy with Dallas in there. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the defense because you, you've got you know three really solid guys, but after that, it's kind of a drop-off. So I want to see what the Ducks are going to do. And if they are going to make some kind of move with Perry or they're going to buy out Kessler or Kessler's going to retire, we talked about that in the podcast uh, two shows ago. So you can listen to those. So that's what I, I kind of look for next uh, with the draft coming up. If the Ducks don't trade or do anything, we'll see. Like I said, Thomas is going to have some articles on that. But I want to see what the Ducks are going to do with the free agency coming up. If they are going to try to uh, – you know, Kessler, we know he wants to play, obviously. He doesn't want to retire, and it looks like he may be out most of the next season. Eves, it looks like he is done. And then Perry, of course, that situation is still ongoing. You know, the buyout window already opened. It uh, happened on June 15th. Perry is still a duck as of today. But uh, it looks like they're trying to do something to move some things around. Uh, between those two players, whether it's Kessler or Perry, it, it seems to be the focus with management right now, how they can make this team better. And it's definitely a youth movement. I mean, you got to look at these guys. As I said, Thomas is writing about them. Uh, Troy Terry, uh, Sam Steele, Max Jones, Max uh, Comtois. Those are the guys that are going to be future. And, and those guys, most likely, if not all of them, a handful of them are going to have a full-time role with the Ducks next season, which is also exciting. You're going to see a lot of younger players up – with the team uh, and you got a coach that brought them up. So instead of bringing somebody outside, you bring in Dallas, a guy who knows the system has been there for, you know, the past three, four years and understands what's going on. And he's working for the same people they worked with uh, before. So it's a smooth transition as well. And I'm excited. I really think that they're going to do some good things next season. You got some young players coming up. I think the ducks just really need to figure out what they're going to do with uh, Kessler and Perry. Oh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. And I don't think well, we're going to see too much movement action come at the draft. I think it's going to be after that. I, I don't know. I just, you know, if history repeats itself, we, we don't really see the Ducks do a lot of action during the draft. I think they're more focused on, you know, being the players that they want. So, I mean, it's going to be an interesting offseason for us. Like, you have to check your phone, and, I mean, you're not going to know what's going to happen. It's just going to be a mystery. And you hear, like, a, a notification go off. And you're like, oh, what's going on? Like, what's going on? Because I'm glued to the phone right now just to see, you know, what's going on. We're not just a duck for every team. I, I want to know, you know, what each and every team are doing. So, you know, that, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be an interesting offseason. We have a lot of change coming. And it's going to be, you know, I don't know, it's just it's crazy. Like, to think Perry might be gone and playing in a different uh, uniform next season, that is insane to me. But, I mean, if it better the team – like I said, you know, last show, you know, that front logo is more important than that name on the back. And whoever's going to give the Ducks, you know, the most success is the best player I want. I, l- I love how you brought up how uh, how Aikens, how he's going to come up and have these players that he coached ready, and they're going to make a smoother transition and, and be those better players in the NHL. Because I, I know they want to play hard for him, and they want to continue to, you know, progress for him because he was their coach. And for a lot of the young guys, that was like their first, you know, professional coach, and, and they're going to want to continue to play off for him. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I was going to ask you, because uh, – what I want for, for the Ducks new coaching staff to do and work on, like number one for me, is uh, I want them to play a full 60-minute game. I've said this numerous times, how the Ducks don't always seem to play a 60-minute game. They, they usually give up in the second period where they're not skating or hustling. But I would love to see the Ducks just, you know, each and every game just give it their all. And you know what? We can't win them all. I understand that. We're not going to go 82-0. That's, it's not going to happen. But I would love to see if they did lose a game. I just don't want to see that heart and 100, you know, 100% skating and play the full game. If you lose, so be it. You have pride knowing that, you know, you beat by better team that day or night. But that's one thing I really want to see change with the Ducks next season, Mike. I don't know if you have anything you want, you know, specific that you want to see Ducks coaching staff. Yeah, I agree. That's been an issue, uh, you know, since Carlisle came back. You know, the Ducks would have some kind of – uh, either a bad start or a bad third period. Sometimes the the second period uh, woes would uh, rear their ugly head as well. So uh, the sixty minute game is definitely key, and I think Dallas is really going to you know harp on that as well. And I think the big thing with him too is he's a good communicator. That's one thing with uh, Carlisle. I think Carlisle was out of touch too much with the players. I I, I don't think he could relate, especially with the younger guys. I, I think he could talk to the senior guys, especially Getzloff and Perry, because he dealt with them before. But with Dallas, 
he brings in an element where he's able to talk to all these younger guys. And that's what the team is looking for now. A lot of youth that's coming up that he developed. So I think that's a huge bonus. And I think that's going to help that team play that 60 minute game and look to be competitive every night. And like I said, look to, you know, we remember a couple of years back when teams used to come to Anaheim, they're like, Oh man, we're going to play the ducks. You know, look out. They're going to hit us hard. They're going to play us hard. And uh, the last couple of seasons, not so much. So that's what I'm looking for, you know, for the Ducks to return. And uh, the Ducks keep on, you know, pushing. If you, uh, you know, some of the other announcements that came out too recently is that uh, uh, David McNabb, the uh, VP of Hockey Operations, got a two year extension. Uh, Dave Nonis uh, got promoted to assistant GM. And we talked about this before on social media, but Jeremy Bettel. Uh, is now going to be the director of high performance, which I think is kind of huge because I heard some rumblings that, you know, with all the injuries that were going on with the Ducks, that uh, they need a little bit more guidance uh, as far as, you know, they're athletes. They know how to prepare for the game, but they they need a little bit more uh, direction, I guess, the way to put it, as far as their off-ice routines and whatnot. So I think bringing in Jeremy Bettle is uh, an added bonus as well. So, this team, they're going in the right direction. They're bringing in people. They're they're keeping people, giving people extensions, doing the right thing. They finally booted Carlisle. And I, like I said, you just have to be happy. I, I think this team is doing all the right things. It's just a matter of them getting out there on the ice and doing it. Oh, yeah, exactly. And and we're not trying to just sit here and just bash on Carlisle. You know, I respect him, and I, I love everything he's, he's done for the Ducks in the past. I mean <laughs> – Look at his accomplishment that speaks for himself. But just, you know, change is needed, and this is all business. And like I always say, the most important thing is is, is it's winning. You don't want to see a team just continuously failing. It, it gets frustrating. It gets old. So, I mean, you know, you had the Blues go that long drought without winning a cup, and their fans, you know, you know, I mean, I'm excited for their fans. So, uh, yeah, so sorry if it seems like we're just kind of like bashing Carlisle, but, I mean, he shouldn't have been back in my opinion, and I've said this numerous times to you, Mike. It, it was just, it was a mistake from you know our GM our management up there bringing him back, but I just look forward to the future. It's gonna be different. Um, the Ducks are making a lot of moves, like you know smaller moves right now, but it's gonna like ultimately lead to our success, especially bringing in a, someone that's familiar with high performance and to kind of you know to, to to train them better so they won't have those injuries and we don't lose someone or, or you know Gibson doesn't get hurt again. But no fault to Gibson when you're facing 40-plus shots a night, though, so you can't really fault him on that. Yeah, I, I think that was part of the frustration of last season. Last season was so painful to watch, but it was even more painful to see Gibson basically out there on the ice playing defense by himself. I mean, that was just ridiculous, and to see him get overworked. And I think that's some of the things that we saw with Perry and Getzloff, too. They, they, they got overworked at different times. Obviously, Perry was out with the injury, but... I, I think Dallas is going to bring a balanced approach. He's going to try and roll all four lines, and that's what the team needs to do. Uh, one little update I did get on Perry that I, I didn't mention on the last show, I actually got it after that, is that it sounds like Perry's agent is talking to uh, Murray, and they're trying to work out some kind of thing where he can end up going somewhere he wants to go. So the communication is there. Uh, like we said, uh, and everyone says it seems likely he's gone, but he is working with Murray. Uh, if you didn't la- uh, listen to the last podcast, we talked about all kinds of destinations where Perry could land. And, I mean, we could kind of transition really in the second part of the show because th- there's a lot of league news that came out. You know, we we did talk about the Penguins last show. We talked about Phil Kessel, how he was going to get traded, and he basically told them to pound sand, and he's not going to get traded. But then – you know, they made some moves uh, recently here, trading uh, Mata away to uh, Chicago, and they got some cap space. They got a little over $3 million. So now the Penguins are kind of back in the hunt for Corey Perry. Um, we also saw the Sharks. They signed that mega deal with Eric Carlson now, so we're going to have to deal with him in the Pacific. So there, there has been some news, Eddie, uh, around the league, uh, some things that have gone on. Even today as we were you know, record the uh, podcast, the Sharks uh, traded Justin Braun too to the Flyers. So there are movements going on right now uh, around the league and some of it centers around uh, teams that may be interested in Corey Perry. Uh, we didn't talk about the Flyers too much about Perry. I mean, maybe that's another team, but we, you know, we really talked about Detroit, Pittsburgh, Columbus, uh, Toronto was another one, the Patrick Marlowe situation. So, I don't know. Uh, we're going to have to see. Perry still has till what, June 30th before he could be bought out. 
We also saw the Kings. They bought out uh, Dion Phaneuf, which wasn't really a big surprise. But a lot of interesting league news, Eddie, that's kind of gone on in the last couple of days since we did the last podcast. Oh, yeah. Truba gets traded, too, uh, from the Jets to, uh, to the Rangers as well. And then a recent report now that Joe Thornton is going to play next season, and he doesn't want to just play for one season. He wants to keep playing as long as he feels good enough to play. So I know people were speculating about him, and and yeah, he's a he's he's part of our rival team. But you have to show give it you know, respect where it's due. He's he's a veteran player. It's been in the league for years, and I mean I hope he signs a different team next season and wins the cup with them. And it's definitely not with the Sharks, but <laughs> I mean you know, you have to just respect a, a warrior and athlete like that at his age. I'm I'm you know I, I'm not even that old, but I, I still feel it at times. I have army years on me, so I, I mean I still feel those bumps and bruises more than you know than I did when I was. Uh, younger so those are some other things that happen and i mean there's gonna be a bunch of news there's gonna be you know i'm, I'm pretty sure we'll have another trade this week i know uh ehlers from the jets that their his name's been popping up and i think he was rumored to go something with the hurricanes and how they want this and they want that so there's gonna be a lot of news going on and i mean we, we could probably do a whole show on in the next few weeks on just other than ducks news and all the other trades that happen so it's gonna be interesting to see and where players end up, especially with the Ducks. I mean, we, we, we all want to, you know, I know some of us want to see Perry gone. Some of us don't. Some, you know, it, I don't know. It's, it's going to be one of those weird things. And, yeah, just, I, the more I think about it, I kind of, like, get stuck when I'm talking. Cause I'm like, just, like, my brain's working on overtime right now. Like, okay, where would I want to see Perry? And, or, or do I ever want to see him go? I know he wasn't my favorite player, but – it just the history there and, and that emotion gets to me, even though it's business and I talk about business a lot, but as a fan, I still have that emotional side too, as well to, you know, I guess feel for players. So it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun at times and stressful, but I mean, hopefully this off season keeps us busy. Cause I know come, you know, after the draft and after free agency and the awards, we have that August, August seems like it's forever because nothing really happens and everything slows down in August. So hopefully we're entertained a little bit more just to get us through to September so we can start seeing some uh, preseason games. Yeah, the thing, like you talk about Perry, the thing that worries me is he gets traded to another team and then he drops 40 that season. You know, that that's that's what <laughs> worries me. I know he's got the knee issue or whatever. Uh, so we talked about it before. I even mentioned on social media if he goes to a team like Pittsburgh or someone on the East Coast, um, I'm okay with that. You know, I'd rather him do that than stay in the West Coast. Uh, you know, and then have to play him four or five times a, a season. So there's that part in the mix with Perry. But from what some people are telling me, you know, the Ducks are still trying to work out some stuff with Kessler. They're trying to work out some stuff with Perry, try and figure out what they're going to do uh, come the season because they're going to have younger players coming up. Like I said, Eakins really likes Getzloff. He didn't really say anything about Perry. So that kind of leads me to believe that there's, you know, it's the same kind of mindset with Murray as far as moving them out. So I'll well, just have to sit and monitor it. Like I said, we've got a little over two weeks to go before the buyout period. Saw some reports that they were saying that, you know, Perry might be bought out, but I, I really don't think that's the best option we talked about on the last show. Yeah. The ducks would uh, get, you know, about 6 million more in cap space this next season, but then the following season, they only get 2 million in cap space. So they're going to kind of be limited though. They are relying on a lot of younger players for the next couple of years. So you know, maybe there's a small possibility uh, Perry hangs out and he stays on the team. We'll see uh, what the Ducks going with the, the youth movement right now. And Dallas as a coach, that's a possibility. So I think we'll wrap up the show. We got, you know, a bunch of fan questions. We'll kind of kind of go through these uh, as we finish up the show. But um, we have uh, Bryson asks about uh, uh, Aiken's experience uh, with the goals. And if it's, you know, improved since this time with Edmonton. And and I do think that is the case. I think we talked about a little bit earlier in the show. The Oilers had a poor puck possession team. They had a poor defense, poor goalie. And he turned things around in San Diego and led that team for a while. And they've talked about the goals being a model team for the AHL. So in terms of that, I, I do think that experience helps him. You know, personally, Eddie, I, I've had some stuff that happened to me where, uh, I didn't perform as well as I did uh, in my, my real career, which is, I know it's not hockey, but uh, it took me a while to get back to where I need to be. And I learned from that and improved and did better. And I think that's the position that uh, Aikens is in. I think that even though we can talk about that experience in Edmonton as being a negative, 
I think he turned it around at a positive, uh, did what he needed to do in San Diego, and here he is with a second chance at redemption. And I, I think he's going to run with his chance. Well, I 100% agree, and I, I believe in, in people – fixing their mistakes. I, I made a lot of mistakes when I first went to the army. I, I just didn't, I threw myself in that situation. I'm, I was 23 years old, 24. So I had a, a, a life before that. I wasn't an 18 year old kid that went in, which it might be a little bit easier to transition because you're right out of high school. You're used to taking orders and doing that. But when I got to the army, it was like a big eye opener. And I made, I made a few mistakes. I got a lot of a, a few write-ups and things like that, but I learned. And then I, I, I overcame and I adapted. I became a good soldier, a, a model soldier. I just didn't get caught doing the stuff that I did before. I mean, but I still learned and, and I, I fixed it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings. And I, I definitely, it's going to be a different, you know, him coaching the Ducks, he did it with the Oilers. And I know in Canada, there's a lot of scrutiny with you know, their hockey teams because those fans are, are hardcore dedicated over there. And, and, and you know, hockey's their, their livelihood over there. So I know there's a lot more pressure over there. So he gets to relax coming here. He's it's a fresh start. He has success in you know with the goals, and he's going to bring up players that deserve to be there and players that he's coached already. So I think it's going to be an easy transition, and we're going to see a better coach due to some of his failures in Edmonton. But his success in San Diego is going to help translate to be a better you know NHL coach. Yeah, and I mean you talk about life in general. Sometimes you have to fail first until you succeed. Uh, you learn from those mistakes or those experiences and it makes you a better person, a better player, a better coach. So that's what I look to. I, you know, I'm kind of, honestly, I'm kind of tired of people harping on the Edmonton thing. I'm like, you know what? Okay. I get it. He was there a year and a half. Yeah. Things didn't go well. Okay, great. That's nice. That was five, six years ago. I think he's done a great job in San Diego and he's ready to go. And uh, another fan question kind of related to that is uh, Michael asks us, you know, what do you think, uh, Eakins can work on uh, tactically or hockey wise. Uh, hope, and he says he's hoping for a strong defensive system and a better power play. Well, I, I definitely think those are things he wants to work on. He talked about the team starting with the goalie and starting with the fence and how that's what you need. And the special teams play, absolutely. Uh, you have these younger guys up that can help contribute on the power play. Like I said, Steele, Terry, Comtois, Jones, those kind of guys, they come up and they can play. Uh, most of the season, that's going to be a huge benefit for the Ducks. And yeah, the special teams play for the Ducks was freaking terrible last season, all the way around. And it's been like that kind of the last couple seasons. It's not really a big surprise. So when the Ducks used to get on the power play, I remember sitting at the games and the fans next to me were like, all right, yeah, whatever. Here's another two minutes wasted, you know, going to go by. And the penalty kill was up and down. There were moments that it was really good and the moments it was kind of so so. But as far as Eakins, I, I think he is going to use more tactics. I was happy to see uh, Murray talk about analytics, uh, which, you know, you don't hear that a lot from him, but he talked about that on the day that uh, Dallas was announced as the coach. I don't know how much he values it. I've never really asked him that in some of the conversations I've had with him, but the fact that he does look at it is encouraging because there is some value in it. Uh I don't think the stats are the end all be all, the puck possession numbers. I, you know, sometimes teams can break the mold or whatnot. But at the same time, I don't think you can ignore it completely and say that it doesn't mean anything. Uh, there is some truth to the team having the puck more than the other team. You're going to win the game. That's absolutely true in a general sense. Uh, if you control the play in the game, you absolutely put yourself in a better position to win the game. It may not always be the outcome, but. The chance of you winning is is definitely better. And the fact that Murray talked about that, I think that's a good thing. And I think uh, Eakins will look at that too. And I and I really am looking at the puck possession thing. Maybe, maybe not they're not gonna be, you know, big on analytics and go all crazy. But the fact that that came up gave me a little bit of hope too, because uh, they're just things you can't ignore, Eddie. Uh, yeah, there's statistics. There's still the human element, there's still the opponents, you gotta play the game. But uh, it's it's something to consider. It's a factor that does help uh, in determining how your team is playing. And I think this is mainly for him stepping behind you know, the Ducks bench and having that, that experience and seeing it firsthand. And I mean, it's I, totally different from behind a bench than sitting up there, you know, in, in your the, the suite and watching your team play than, than, you know, going down there and being the coach and having to make the d- different decisions and seeing what the team's doing wrong, like up front. 
So, you know, the change of that, and definitely it, you want the puck more. You have the puck more, you create more opportunity. You can you can take away the opportunity for them scoring and limit them on shots with more control of the puck. So I, I hope they, they take that into consideration and do whatever they, they didn't do in the past and do it now so the Ducks can change you know, and be a better team, especially with puck possession. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, I the theme of this show is is you just have to look to a brighter future for this team. You got a youth movement going on. You have a coach that is connected with all the players. He doesn't have to go in and relearn anything. He already knows who management is. Uh, he helped push the goals. I mean, they went to the playoffs three of the last four seasons. And he's a good communicator. And I think that was the problem with Carlisle. Like we said, not trying to bag on him too much. Uh, even though he did suck, for lack of a better term, in the second in the second stint, that that's the way it was. But the sport is changing, and you have to adapt and you have to overcome, kind of like the military with with your situation, Eddie. And even in my my career, you you have to be able to keep up with the trends. You have to uh, adjust on the fly. You have to be able to read the game as it's being played. And you can't just go with the same, okay, I'm going to go with plan A, and I'm going to keep going with plan A. And that's what the Ducks did last season. Last season was so frustrating because they would just do the same thing over and over again. That's you know the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and hoping that a different outcome would happen. And we saw that. The Ducks went on three big-ass losing streaks last season, and everybody was frustrated. And I don't blame everybody. So... I would have liked Dallas back, uh, you know, running the Ducks last season if the decision was made earlier to pull Carlisle. But once it wasn't made till February, it made sense to me. Put put Murray behind the bench, like you said. Learn the players. Uh, get to know what's going on in the locker room. Get a little bit more intimate with the situation with the team. And I think that worked out good. Let the goals keep doing what they were doing. Uh, you know, do your search. Talk to a lot of people. See what you think, and, and then come up with your decision t- towards the end, which is what he told me. So, uh, I, I, overall, I'm excited. Like I said, it, it's summertime. Stanley Cup's over. The Blues won. I'm happy Boston lost, but uh, I look forward to this team. I don't think there's going to be much of a layoff with you know how they're going to do. I think next season they're going to compete. Will they be a contender? It, it, it's yet to be seen. But I can guarantee you, you're going to be entertained next season. No, oh, I can't. I can't wait. Come October, that that first home game, and and I'm happy to be living here, back here. I mean, sometimes I get frustrated with California, but I, I'm happy I get to attend the home games. There, I took all those years gone, and I missed you know having those 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 home openers, going out with my friends, you know, pre drinking before. Hopefully, you don't lose a coin toss, so you can be a DD because that is not fun. But um, thank God for Hooper. <laughs> But <laughs> you, you, you drink at games? No way! I've never. You're always sober every time we go to a game, Eddie. I, think, I have never seen you drunk. I think there's like a handful of times where I went sober, but that's when I'm like, I start quiet because I'm usually tired, and when I'm tired, I don't like to drink because I, I don't feel it. Like I'll drink two or three beers and like nothing happens. I just feel bloated, so I'm like, oh. So I'm I think I think you're I think you're sober before the game. A couple times we hung out. I think that's when you were sober. <laughs> But no, in all seriousness, yeah. I mean, we we've had some good times uh, the last couple seasons. We're looking forward to next season. And you know, the other thing is, don't forget to check out our uh, Patreon website, Patreon.com/slash Ducks and Pucks. You know what? If you sign up on there, I'm going to do a special deal right now. If you sign up and you donate uh, just one buck, I'll send you any T-shirt that we have. I don't care where you live. You can live in Canada. You can live across the world. I'll send you it free shipping. That's it. Sign up for one buck. I'll send you any T-shirt. Obviously, the the sizes uh, depend on what we have in supply. But sign up on there. Check it out. And uh, we'll get that going. We're still going to have the watch parties next season. Uh, Like I said, we're going to have a show after the draft. We have Thomas. He's going to come on and talk about what's going on. Check out all his articles. He's got a whole bunch. I posted a bunch today. I'm posting a whole bunch in the next couple days. And uh, just be excited. I'm looking forward to this. And how the Ducks are going to do coming uh, in October. So, uh, we'll like we said, we'll have podcasts as things come out. Uh, we won't have another one before the draft unless something crazy happens, just like the uh, the Eakins uh, signing. But uh, uh, with that, we will be back after this weekend. And let's go Ducks.